This is a really pretty song. Important. This title uses uh, this title rather uses an autosave feature. Please don't turn off your Nintendo Switch console when you're seeing the autosave function. No. This is pretty looking. Nice ass there, pops. I do a mama. Aw, they're adorable. Aw. What's wrong, kiddo? I actually like that. That's actually a pretty clever chair. It was like, it was like you can actually like, use the right analog stick. Yeah, you can use the right analog stick to kind of... You know, very detailedly click on something. This you can move it quickly. This you can kind of adjust the shot. Makes me want to squeak my. I'm not having an obsessive compulsive disorder here. Of some might take Python stuff. That's right, poke it. Man, that's pretty dark. Uh, red juice. Let's try that. All right, so the red juice kills it. So we gotta bring him to San Francisco. Okay. I'm down for that. Aww. This is really cute so far. Yeah, because Ty was saying this before about this introduction. Um, uh, she was... That so far it seems like okay, jeez, I gotta click more. I, I kid you not, all these adventure games, these like uh, frame adventure games I've been playing so far, I've been doing nothing but collecting goddamn ladder steps. Like in Tiny Big Adventure. Kind of gray. There's no item in place here, so I need. I need ropes. Oh yeah, Ty. Well, I love you currently, so there. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Ty. Pretty much, uh, she was talking about this, which I thought was. She said that there was like no audio whatsoever. Or no di actual spoken dialogue. Oh, yeah. Um, the timepiece there. And it was like literally left for church. Oh, yeah, tongue tied there. Interpretation. Or interpretation, rather. Words. Got one of those I need.
And I can see that so far. And I need... One more. To rehydrate the flowers. that last piece of um, rope. Yeah, because uh, Ty was talking about how there's an interpretation of how the characters are. Um, and so far I see it as basically a little girl was sick. And so... Oh, it's one of these kind of puzzles, okay. I'll leave it like that for now. I'm actually looking at the puzzle currently. I see, I see, if I do that, then that won't be able to. Hmm. Yeah, because like, I can already figure out this puzzle, it's just I gotta get those, get that green to the green. See? It... Understood. Understood. I'm also probably thinking this too much, or thinking this uh, puzzle too much here. Actually, let's... Leave that like that for now. That. That way. That way. And then... Jerry Pie! Alright, Tai Tai. Bunch of slugs. Alright. Yeah, this is like definitely through the imagination of a child. 
So, it seems like the brother's telling his sick sister a story to help her feel better. This is what Ty said as well, um, in terms of the, the story plot. And so they're capturing that. Hello, Mr. Steel Rose. Hope you're doing well today, sir. Currently playing my brother Rabbit. Which well, looks like each outlet represents a boy and a girl. How the heck do you freeze or melt that? Oh, how'd you find that one? Seems like that pop school is like the last piece I need. interesting about this game so far is the fact that there's no like uh, hints or nothing it just throws you straight into the fray it goes now nah, you're gonna figure this out on your own kind of overwhelming but you like it Well, there's actually a few communities I've been in before, like, uh, was it Black Desert Online? That community is interesting. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna borrow Ty's expression there. Interesting, because it's... Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that one... I haven't seen too much on it. Controls, okay.
Oh, this this room must be representing each the mother and the father then. A straightforward puzzle it in. Hey! We're gonna go up here. We're gonna take a little trip. We're gonna meet Dr. Falcon. And the doctor's Pretty much the character, like pretty much the voice telling the story. Okay, so this is why I interpreted from the story so far from this. Yeah. Oh, let me look up the gameplay for that one again, because I recognize the name. I just haven't seen anything too much for it. of New Britannia. Better know the benefits of playing your friends, becoming a permanent resident in a shared universe. Rich role playing, skillful combat, masterful crafting, choose your allies, the oracle, path of curve, path of truth. Ooh, a naked demon lady. Oh, Mr. British. Star, yep. Oh, okay, I remember this one now fully. My brain was like trying to. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Because you had the virtue bit there, so it's like obviously um, Ultima. I just couldn't remember the gameplay. Just had a flashback, Ultima 9, and I got sad. Okay, gotta collect butterflies. These guys all know about my uh, love for Ultima Online. Got sad again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no worries on the typos or anything like that. Usually, if anyone typos with me, I, I sometimes I'll kind of like I'll ask a question, to make confirm what they meant. Otherwise, I kind of like read what they they put and I kind of you know correct it in my mind if it's. There's a piece of paper on down here. Red one.
The troubles with this, though, uh, via... At least the Switch-wise is really damn good. Like, it translates exceptionally well for... Need a couple more. Need a couple more ice creams. There's one in the other thing over here. The other refrigerator. Yep. Anyway, one more ice cream. Yeah, the story pretty much uh, the pictures or depicts rather little brother's telling his sister who's sick, you know, this story about her favorite stuffed animal, the, the, the rabbit. The bear there, which you saw in the picture illustrations, is the doctor and how they're all journeying to go um, see that doctor bear to help get her, make her better. And she's a sad flower creature right here. This is her, and that's him. He's the rabbit, or he's making himself the rabbit. I think I summarized the whole entire story. Um. Camelot, the Imgrid server from time to time. That one I haven't really played in years. Alright, so I need the buttons. So that right there is hinting it needs to be cooled down, so we need the ice cream bars there. I can go for a sherbet right about now. I love sherbet. Spe especially if you can get like, um, you know, like real, real sherbet. Oh, that's so good. Shit, I want some sherbet. I'm just thinking about sherbet. It's cheap to get too. I mean, sherbet is you know, fucking a quarter basically. It's so good though, especially you get the real stuff like the chunks of like uh, strawberry in there or cherry or a lot of people like the grape one, which I do too. I do like the grape one. I love the uh, Napoleon versions of them, which have like several varieties in it. Hey, I got like a tub of it for like a couple of bucks. It was yeah, guys, yeah. Hold on. Try it through. One more of those. Are there any benches nearby? No. Don't you think it was much easier back in the day? In the... Well, 
Back in the day, in the 90s and the 80s, at least I can't speak for the 80s too much, but, um, I mean, grow I had, I had the, the aspects of the 80s infused into my lifestyle growing up as, uh, when I was younger, but it was, um, I definitely say in the 90s it was straightforward. You looked at magazine, you hyped about a ma your game, you went to go buy it, and you played it. Uh, there wasn't a ton of feedback like we have now, so the convenience and the transparency of gaming has evolved since, you know, just looking at magazines and hoping for the best. Um, we kind of grew up from an era where people just learned to appreciate games as opposed to just, you know, basically just taking a gamble with what they buy. I mean, you got your articles, your reviews from journalists, but then that's subjectable because you could easily buy any game and enjoy it. Um, not unlike today where you have a lot of people who are, you know, they'll bastardize a game like Duke Nukem Forever on PC, right? The game's not bad at all. It's subpar, but decent enough to play. So it's really not a shit game. It's just unfortunately it had shit circumstances applied to it. So over time, that game, because it got changed around so freaking much, it was not the same game as it was trying to be originally. So it became a mess where it isn't a bad game by definition because it's still playable. It was just not the game that we would hope for. So that's why it kind of fell in that bracket of, you know, a lot of people just disliking it, which rightfully so on the consoles. It isn't good on the consoles. PC, it's a lot better. Um, with the 80s and the 90s going back to that, it's basically... Um, a lot of people played a game and they enjoyed it because that's the only way they can get a hold of those type of games. It isn't like now where we have so much accessibility towards games like this I'm playing right now, my brother Rabbit, or, you know, mailing in for like uh, Dr. Brain, a castle of Dr. Brain, or the island of Dr. Brain. Uh, we didn't have really have eBay uh, so much, at least not at first. You have to do the mail in, you remember that mail order shit for eBay there? And so you, you just have to go to either computer shows, go to Babbage's, go to like a local store up in the UK or something, and you have to uh, look from there. Or you went to a, a magazine like PC Gamer, which was like a little bit later on. I think it was like 90... What year did that come on, magazine come out? I'm going to say 97, but I'll probably be dead wrong. I'll say 94. I'll just say 94, though I'm probably completely wrong. I, I'm just, I can't remember when that actually came out anymore. But... You, you had PC World, you know, you had shows like the Computer Chronicles, which would kind of inform you about what's coming out. So it was really... You hyped about it, and your expectations built about what you were offered, as opposed to the, uh, the huge offering we have nowadays. I'd say it's a lot easier nowadays, because we're, we have that more of that leg room to kind of go back and play older games and enjoy them. With the, the option to completely go back to the future and just, or stay to the future and just play everything new that comes out. Or, you know, enjoy, you know, community patches galore. But I, I'd say it was an enjoyable time. Ever heard of a term, choice paralysis? Um, yeah. I suffer from that big time. Yeah, like you stick to uh, simple choices as opposed to expanding. And it's like, I, I usually stick to, I'm very straightforward of how I play games and everything. What the hell does this even do? Like, for me, like, I stick to games that I think are fun or I enjoy them overall. Like, this, for example, I can play a lot of adventure games like this. Like, these, uh, find an item in the, the environment kind of game. No big deal, right? I can enjoy it. But the game really has to have addicting gameplay. Something that part of my compulsive personality would actually enjoy. Um, I can't play games like... PUBG or, I mean, the PvP side of Fortnite is just because they're not really that fun. They're just very watered-down games. 
Uh, this has visual eye candy, so I could sit back here and just play this all day. Uh, but again, it's like you give me a game like those others, it just doesn't feel as good. So I, I tend to stick to games that uh, challenge me mentally or play games like that challenge my fingertips. So, like for me, I'm very open-minded usually to games as long as they're solid. So it's like for me, the paralysis is really just, you know, when I play older games, I kind of stick to more of platformers or first-person adventure games or adventure games or, you know, the slight racing car game here and there, but it's really, I stick more to a certain genre than any other. So you give me, like, an old-school FPS shooter like Catacombs 3D, I'll stick to that, or if I play Wolfenstein 3D, I'll play that for a while, and you know what I mean? It's like, like, I stick to what I know uh, with, with back in the day, which, luckily, I was able to kind of brush up on some older MS-DOS games as I grew up. <laughs> And so I was offered more of a choice to expand from that, or learn from that at least, too. For me, the most important thing about games is gameplay or immersion, and sometimes with... Yeah, for me, it has to be 94 for the PC Gamer. Yep, Danny on form. Was it 94? I just guessed. <laughs> yeah, that, I didn't really remember, so I just sort of guessed, and if I was wrong, I'd be corrected, and I'll be good. But, um... I just couldn't remember when that came out. I haven't read a PC gamer in ages. I think they're more website-based now. Um... Yeah, it's like, for me, definitely the gameplay has to be key. Like, if the game's amazingly fun, like Super Mario Brothers, right, for the NES, very fun, insanely fun. You can play that. Uh, Duke Nukem. Or AKA the uh, uh, Turrican Sprite ripoff simulator. But no, no, I actually like Duke Nukem 1 and 2. But. That was actually one of the funnier things about that game, by the way, Duke Nukem. Now, we all grow up with memories of that game. Um, the fact that if you go back and look at the sprite stuff, there's even a website that even points all this out. Which is like. Uh, Duke Nukem basically took the sprites. From Turrican. And so you're like, what? You know, so you go and look and you're like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> you just go, well, what the fuck? You know, it was, it was quite crazy. It's like you, this game that was beloved on the MS DOS, like one and two, especially two, it's more noticeable, especially for the Amiga textures that it borrowed a lot of those sprites. Wait, that was actually balloons? Huh. Okay, I need to make her happy. There you go, buddy. That ice cream. I am tripping balls right now in this game. Now we're missing some tile pieces. Okay, so I need six of those. Yeah, it's like a... It's a, like a... A drifter's memory. Like, it feels... Like, you know, this kid is trying to ex examine this life of this world to distract his sister from the pain that she's going through. Which is really a cute story. I mean, it, it's a sad and cute story that, you know, it actually is really, so far, really well told. Even though it's not saying anything. Uh, Ty said this before in her, her article that it really, it tells a damn good story. Even though it's not saying anything. Have you got dog? No. Oh. 
Alright, uh flowers. Got a song stuck in my head now. is it um all right then we'll wrap this up for now i'm actually really digging the game otherwise but this is my brother rabbit